Live from the studios of KMBY Television in Monterey, California, it's Monterey On Tonight with Gary Morris. Three hours of your favorite classic music videos from yesterday and today. Telephone and in-studio guest. And a few surprises along the way. And now, here's your host, Gary Morris. Well, hi, and welcome to Monterey on Tonight. It is show number seven. I can't believe that I've done seven shows without you. <laughs> uh, I, am, I am joined tonight on show number seven by my partner of many years. 20. 20 years. 20. <laughs> This is Jules, as she was known on the first Monterey on Tonight 12 years ago. The show was called Monterey on Tonight with Gary and Jules. And here we are now in 2022, and it's called Monterey on Tonight with Gary Morris. Good evening. Welcome. Nice to see you over there. Yeah. yeah. It's, been, it's been a long time. It's been a, uh, it has I been. Know. Thank you for inviting me. Well, <laughs> Listen, it's it's <laughs> great that you are here. It yeah. kind of brings back memories from all the shows we did uh, 12 years ago. We, we had a, a, a good time doing it. And why don't you tell the audience uh, kind of how I uh, tried to coax you back to do this. <laughs> And uh, she, uh, I, 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 I would be happy to. Uh, I would be happy right, look to. Look at the camera there, and you tell them what happened. <laughs> so Gary, um, he, uh, I'm just, I'm just dialing in here. I'm just so happy to be here. And I, I, I re remember that you had missed and said you missed the days when you were on KMBY. And what year was that? Oh, gee, it was KMBY Radio. Mm -hmm. That was 60 years ago. Right. And then yeah. you did the record hop. and Well, the record hop was before KMBY. It was actually, I was doing KMBY and the record hop yeah. at the same time. 60 years ago. Right. The record up in Fresno, KMBY in Monterey when I was at Fort Ord. Right. But tell them about how you and I did the show. Well, that was such a fun story because we were um, in affiliation with Cool TV Music. And we thought how fun it would be to really help the community have a live TV show, play music videos. And I remember I was in the back doing all the research on all the videos to kind of glean some maybe did you knows from the music. Yeah, yeah. And, the, and we did, and we had a, a great time, and we did it for close to a year. And then your your mom was uh, in hospice, my grandmother was, and we were doing it for them. Yeah, we Well, actually, we were doing it for all you guys, too. But but it's just that it felt like it had ran its course, and then the opportunity came, and, you know, you're, you're like, what am I going to do? And then you surprised me. You're like, look what I'm going to do. Do you no, mind if no, I have? No, no, no. Do you mind if I have? Would you like to Wait be my co? Wait a minute. Wait a minute. <laughs> So because, You're going to see us, how we be, banter back and forth. Because I had my near-death experience, and I almost passed back in January, and she brought me back from almost the other side, uh, I wanted to do something to have fun. Actually, it's on our press release. I wanted to do this to have fun. And so I called her. I was driving back from Fresno, where our corporate office is. And I said, hey, I want to do the show again. And there was dead silence. <laughs> she didn't answer. <laughs> And she goes, not with me. <laughs> so I said, all right, then I'll tell you what. I got an idea. I actually took the page out of Jim Vossen's book. Um, I want to have a different female co-host every week. Is it okay with you? What did I say? Go for Go it. Go for it. <laughs> so, so here we are. But tonight, she is You know why, don't you? Guest. Do you know why? Why? So actually, last Sunday, I surprised Gary and popped into the studio because I was just so proud of what he's doing and, and all the work he's doing, what I did and what he did from the last show. And I was like, and, and then I thought, you know what? You, you, you're, you're guest next week. Why don't you move over to the next week and I'll come. So this is my birthday present to Gary. Yeah. This yeah. is my it, birthday. My birthday is coming up. I'm not going to tell you how old I am, but my birthday is coming up on the 10th. Hey, your yeah. soul gets younger yeah. day by day, honey. I'm getting younger, hopefully. Yeah, yeah, you are. But so here she is tonight, Juliana, my partner of all these years. Thank you. My former co-host from 2010, the Gary and Jules Monterey on tonight. Thank you for inviting me. And we had fun, didn't we? Oh, we had a blast. We had a blast. What, you know that's really, what life's about. It's yeah. just, you, just, you know, you just got to figure out where your blast is, and that's where you go, right? Have fun. And you know what was really interesting? <laughs> The pizza that we have in the green room is from Mountain Mike's at Broadway in Fremont. And 
12 years ago, when we were doing our original show in that same building, in that same space, was me and Ed. <laughs> That's right. And they were bringing the pizza to the show 12 years ago. So nothing really has changed, has it? Well, thank you to Mount Mike's Pizza yeah, for our so green good. room pizza. It oh, oh, it's wonderful. Wonderful. Thank you, Heidi. I really appreciate your uh, kindness in sending the uh, pizza over for the green room. And uh, so anyway, this show is about music and interviews. So our first guest tonight, you'll see him in about 15 minutes, is Mr. Teeny Shake. Yeah. And again, Teeny was on our station many, many years ago. Yeah, we ran, we ran his Coastal Cuisine uh, cooking show in the Fresno market and actually the whole San Joaquin yeah, Valley market. We did. We did. And people would come over, drive over from the... The valley to, to, to hear see. and to see Teeny and get his autograph. Yeah, they did. Yeah. They, well, we, you'll hear about that when I have him on yeah, as a guest. Yeah, yeah. Anyway. So shall we go play some music? That sounds great. Okay, our first video of the night. Now, these are videos. Hopefully, some of you out there in TV land have heard of these videos. Uh, if you're uh, on the young side, you probably haven't. But our first video tonight <laughs> is Dolly Parton and Kenny Rogers and Islands in the Stream. So let's go play that video and get started with tonight's show. That was Adele Monterey on Tonight is the Show. I'm Gary Morris, and this is my partner. Jules, the Gary and Joel Show. Remember that? <laughs> We did it for uh, almost a year back uh, 12 years ago. Oh. And we were just reminiscing about some of the people that were involved in the old show. You want to go ahead and Well, we, I want to say hello to Joy Anderson. She's in the audience tonight. And uh, Joy was the operator and manager of Mariposa, Mariposa Suites, Suites at that time. At that time. And um, we want to say hello to her. She does so much for our community um, through her various... Uh, organizations the chamber of commerce and the rotary club and so yeah she's, yeah. she's a pistol hi she, joy hi joy want to say hello you know, joy and jim have the jim boss and have the same birthdays yeah i know so and that's how i remember and we want to uh just we miss jim and we yeah. miss gary hamada gary hamada was our 10 o'clock guest in the monterey and tonight show the old show in the yeah. old show and he would keep us up, updated on all of the events going around uh, along on the peninsula can i talk about what's changed in 12 years Sure. Well, uh, is that, are you asking me? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> we're we're going to play with you tonight. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> 12 years. When I first met her, she was blonde. That's right. That's right. That's right. Now you're not a blonde. No, anymore. I'm incognito here. <laughs> so, what, what came uh, over you that made you decide that you wanted to change to. Uh, well, two, t there's two, two reasons. Do you remember? Which one would you like me to share? <laughs> well, the one that maybe the three. <laughs> maybe the audience will, uh, will uh, understand your reasoning to go back to uh, your natural. Character. Well, I I I, uh, I took a leave of absence from media and I went back and reconnected with my ancestry through the Cherokee Nation and and uh, service. The Cherokees weren't blonde. No, well, no, it's not what it was. <laughs> it's just that transformation process, ah. and so I, you know, I work with. Um, the uh, the guidance of a medicine man for my medicine woman work. So anyway, hence the airing, right? You got your earring, I got my earring. Oh, let's talk about my earring. So this is like transformation. This is what happens this in is life. This is what happens in 12 If you want to grow, folks. right? Well, I yeah. guess that's what you call it. So you <laughs> see the earring here. So let me tell you the story about the earring. I promised her many years ago, I said, when I retire, I'm going to get an earring and I'm going to let my hair grow really long and put it in a ponytail. Isn't that what I said? Uh, you know that was my idea, right? Was that your idea? That was my idea. Oh, yeah, all right, I, well, <laughs> we were out on the balcony I at night, and I said, "Do you know what you should do?" And you said, "Not until I retire." Yeah. And then after your um, COVID, your COVID, and you know, that was an, an, a quite an ordeal yeah. for us. Yeah. And you were in the ICU for eleven days. Came home and, and donated bye bye to the other three side. times in my arms. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. anyway, but I uh, thought, you're here. Look well, at look I, at this. I thought I'm it so was happy. time that I become hip. So my earring is my hipness. What's that song? Hip, hip. There's a hip song. How's that going? Was that no, uh, Huey Lewis in the <laughs> no, news? No. It's cool to be hip. Maybe that's what I'm thinking of. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. So anyway, I have my earring. She has I've her had dark my hair. Earring. She has her brunette hair back, and and here we are, 25, almost 20, 20 years. So. Well, we've been to, yeah, about 20, 20 years. years. Yeah, We're going to have an anniversary in November. Thank you for. On your birthday. Thank you for all those 20 years. Yeah, and yeah. so here we are. So, Gary, why did you want to do a television show again? Okay, I'll ask you. Gary, why did you want to do a television show again? I wanted to have fun. That's right. 
Are we having fun? Yeah, I'm having fun. I'm having, having, I'm having fun. fun. And you're yeah. just the guest. I know. <laughs> I'm having fun every week. <laughs> I know. When I am here, I am having fun every week. Thank you for what you're doing for the community, well, Gary. Well, you know what? I it, it was part of my m- ministry when I almost passed. I said, when I get back, I want to do good deeds for people. I want to help people. And I hope tonight by doing this show and having people on, I mean, our next guest, you're going to see Teeny in just a minute. This man is doing so much Mm -hmm. for the community in this community. He's been here all his life. And you're going to hear about a wonderful man when I want to sit him right here and do an interview with Teeny. I warmed his seat up for him. (laughs) All right. All right. Let's go play the next video and we'll get Teeny in here. What's the next video tonight? Is that IOU? All right. Let it roll. (laughs) Thanks. Thanks. And we are back. This is Monterey on Tonight. I'm Gary Morris. And tonight I want to welcome my longtime Monterey friend, Teeny Shake. Teeny, welcome. Well, Gary, it's show. great to be here. Hey, Are you kidding? This is, a, you, this is an honor. <laughs> it's been a long time. This guy is so busy, I, I can't even pin him down when I'm over at Fisherman's Wharf or wherever I am in the city to say, Teeny, Teeny, here, slow down a minute so we can talk. <laughs> It's true. I have to get we'll him get in the busy. studio to talk to him. That's true. This That's is true. true. We got All a lot right, of great so stuff. If you look on the screen, it says, "Oh, you guys changed it to businessman. How about entrepreneur? You're an entrepreneur. He is involved in so many things in this community and has been for so many years. Why don't you, for the folks that are watching from somewhere other than the Monterey area?" Tell everyone about your family and how you guys got into the restaurant business. I appreciate it, Gary. Well, you know what? It's always a great story to tell. I'm born and raised here in the beautiful Monterey Peninsula. Uh, Our family has been in business on Monterey Fisherman's Wharf since 1950, 71 years in the same location, Gary. And it's amazing Amazing. that mom and dad came to the United States with nothing. And uh, I have five older brothers, by the way, so I'm the youngest. Five older brothers, no sisters. And one of the challenging things, Gary, is that every single one of my brothers is highly successful. They are. They're great, great businessmen. Yep. They have great hearts. They do a lot for the community. So when we do things in the community, uh, there's a lot of credit that goes around to the individuals. But really, it's the entire family yes. that just does a tremendous job. Name, name all of the different businesses your brothers are involved in here. In you know, that would take too long a time. I don't have that, but I will tell you, my old three oldest brothers, they were commercial fishermen in Monterey. And we have three brothers that are in the restaurant business. And uh, it's interesting because through the years, my brothers would literally catch the fish in Monterey Bay, bring it to our family's fish market, and then we would take and cut it, serve it in the restaurant oh, that okay. afternoon for lunch. And Gary, it just didn't get any fresher than that. Wow. You wow. know, so before there's like this new culinary term, farm to table. Yeah. Man, we were doing that stuff 60 years 60 ago, years you ago. know, and uh, getting that fish fresh. I always say fish is fresher at Fisherman's Wharf. Beautiful local stuff that we get right out of the bay. Matter of fact, we have salmon season that is... Uh, in full swing right, right now. now so if you get down to the wharf you definitely got to have some of our local monterey Bay salmon it's amazing but dynamic family oh, you know I absolutely don't, yeah and, and you know this guy now i got to tell you this story about when we first met he was doing a show called coastal cuisine a tv show and i saw it and i said teeny this thing is as good as anything that you see on the food network you really did knock it out of the park with that show can i run this in fresno he said yes so i ran it in fresno and on the bottom of the screen we said come on into to uh to any of the shake family restaurants and there would be a discount available if they mentioned they saw it on our tv channel in fresno this guy, because he was doing the show, and this is this is no baloney, people when, from the San Joaquin Valley would drive over here, they'd seek him out, and they'd ask him for his autograph. You know, Gary, that is really true, and I'll never forget the conversation that you said, you know, Timmy, he goes, I'm going to make you a star. I'm going to make you a TV, and I'm make you a TV star in uh, Fresno. So you know Valley what I'm going to do now? Because I just resurrected one of those shows the other day. I was watching it on YouTube. And I said to Teeny, I said, Teeny, I'm going to fix those shows up so they're going to be brand new in 2022. And we're going to run them again in Fresno. That would be awesome. I look forward to that. And I'm so grateful for all the uh, the fans from Fresno 
uh, over the years in the Valley because even today, you know, all these years later, they still come to me and seek me out at the warp, ask for an <laughs> autograph, take a picture. And I'm happy to do that because I'm so appreciative uh, that I was able to impact their lives. You did. Teach them how to cook a little bit of seafood and, and bring and a little flair. And that's the key. You know, why, I'll tell you why I want to run the shows. Because you did all the shows about cooking seafood. Yes. About And there's a lot of people that don't know how to cook seafood. Teeny did every one of those coastal cuisine shows about cooking seafood. The, Teeny. You should have gotten an Emmy for those shows. You know, it's funny because uh, uh, Phil Dean, that was the producer of the show, uh, he passed away. Such a wonderful man and worked so hard on the production and oh, did yeah. an amazing job. But he uh, for, lived long enough to see us win a Telly Award uh, telly. for the show. So we're Great. at least honored that he was able yeah, to yeah. Uh, experience that in his lifetime. But it was just a lot of fun because... I really was passionate about teaching people how to cook seafood because that's the one thing everybody said. I know how to cook beef, chicken, yeah, pasta, easy. but I don't know what the heck to do with seafood. So, uh, you know, I'm born and raised in the business, born and raised with a, a whole seafood lifestyle. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to teach people and educate them on how to cook seafood. And that's really where the show All came right. In. Now I want to talk about the real estate business. Yes. Tell me, you kind of segued. You went and got your, did you get your license? I did get my license, yes. And, and you are active now in the business. I am active in the business now. Matter of fact, uh, it has been a quite a transition because, yeah. uh, you know, I just have a lot of energy and I really love doing things. And so uh, I've worked, you know, two and a half lifetimes in the family businesses and restaurants and my own restaurants and I uh, thought about what would I like to do for kind of a, a final act, if I could. You and sounded like me. Yes, yes. And so, <laughs> like uh, so I thought, act. you know, real estate something I have done for years with my own family businesses and uh, buying my first home at age 19 years old Good and for you. Uh, several homes later. So I am really honored to now be working in real estate, representing other people, Gary, because that same hard work ethic yeah. of attention to detail, yeah. of hospitality, of really strong negotiating skills uh, really has done well for me. I had five closings in June. Oh, wow. Unbelievable. Just a great month. So That's great. Uh, some of my clients didn't get the memo that there might have been some economy issues. Uh, <laughs> they were excited and loved their new homes and, and now, businesses. Let's talk so. about what has happened since the interest rates have started creeping up. Yes. What's going on? Is the market softening a bit? The market is softening, but we're instead of seeing, you know, 10 to 12. Uh, the multiple offers, we're seeing less multiple offers, but the sellers are still getting a strong price uh. for their homes. And for the buyer side of it, even though interest rates are double from what they were yeah, last they were, year, yeah. they are still historically low. Wow. So even 5%, I mean, think about a fixed rate that if you have, say, a $3,500 a month payment, uh, now, 20 years from now, you're still going to have a $2,500 yeah, a month yeah. or $3,500 a month. That's the way you have to look at it. That's how you have to yeah, look at it. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. Uh, real estate is the best investment against uh, inflation. It's the, really the greatest protection against inflation. So whether you're looking to buy or you're looking to sell, it is still a strong market on either side. Now, is Monterey still as strong in Carmel and... Pacific Grove and all these uh, bergs around our area. You know, are they Gary, still all the same? Are they all strong? Yes, yeah, it is amazing. This peninsula has weathered through the years. Uh, has had great, great strength in the real estate market, and I think a lot of it has to do with it's one of the most beautiful places in the world. It is absolutely the lifestyle to live here. Mm -hmm, you mm -hmm. know, the outdoor lifestyle, the coast. You have, you know, uh, recreation trails. You have the mountains. You have, uh, you know, world-class racetracks, golf courses. I mean, it is an amazing lifestyle to live on the Monterey Peninsula. It's so a fabulous place. It is. So I think it's it's just desired. I am fortunate because I'm born and raised here, and I am so grateful. You're prejudiced. That I am prejudiced. And, you know, I'm thinking my mom and dad, they could have went anywhere, but I'm so grateful uh, they uh, chose Monterey Peninsula. And my beautiful. mom got me here because mom and dad bought a home when my dad retired in Carmel in 75. And that's how I got here. I came because mom and dad had a house here. And then when mom got into her 80s and dad was gone, I said, Juliana, I think we need to get a home here. Yeah. And that's how we got here back in 2005. I wish now I would have came in 75. Exactly. But I think it is a great for anybody watching this that's a parent. 
I think the greatest investment you can make in your kids is help them get home ownership. Yeah. Because in time, it'll grow in equity and value. And there's nothing, even the stock market won't keep up with real estate. So invest in your kids' future uh, by helping them to get their own home. Okay, we didn't put a phone number on the screen on, yes. how, on how people can get a hold of you. Yes. You, you want to give your me, email? I, absolutely. Right, happy give your to. number out. My phone number is 831 224 Four eight seven four, and I would love a call from you. I can help you if you're looking for a business, a commercial investment property, or residential. I have a beautiful twelve point eight million dollar home right on the waterfront by the <laughs> Highlands Inn. If anybody's out there looking for that type of home, I got you covered. But if you're looking for a starter home, come on down, and I'll definitely get you going. You know what? I couldn't get over now. This and this is me. When Betty White's home went up for sale right down from where mom lived in Carmel Meadows, yes. they were asking $8 million. And the house sold for $2 million over the asking price. I, I have a client of mine from Silicon Valley, and he, I'm sure he's going to watch this, that was so frustrated that we didn't get that house. <laughs> uh, he, that was his perfect home. It met, check off all the boxes. And we were just a little bit late getting oh. into that uh, deal. Teeny, did you but, think it would go for $2 million over asking? You know, I'm telling you, I, the, the place is so spectacular. The location, the oh, view. Man. Gary, I, I think that uh, whoever paid the $2 million extra, they got something. They got Betty White's house. They got Betty White's house. Boy, and talk, about ba- talk about uh, talking rights with that. Huh? Yeah. Well, how about Brad Pitt? Uh, yeah, forty million. A forty million dollar home. Now, where he, where did he buy that house? That's toward that Highlands Inn area. Oh, and no. one of the things that he cited was the weather. Oh. You know, we have that beautiful, consistent sweater weather all year round. And uh, Gary, that's what people absolutely. All love right, about so the here's here's the secret. I, you're going to find out for my audience. Where is Brad Pitt going to hang out when he's here? You know, I'm the, <laughs> I, I, I think he's coming to Fisherman's Wharf. All right, <laughs> he's gonna, okay, he's going to come people, down to the Fisherman's everybody Grotto. Everybody loves Fisherman's Wharf and Fisherman's <laughs> Grotto, and uh, uh, we just, uh, uh, you know, we have so many celebrities that come into our family's restaurant. You know, we have a telephone line in the studio, and I'm going to start a thing right here on this show. We're going to have Brad Pitt sightings, so they can call us, and then we'll give that information out. Yeah. How's that? That sounds great. Where, where did you cool. see Brad Pitt? And get let us know, and we'll tell everybody. We'll get a hold of KMBY Radio because they're 24 hours a day, and we'll do Brad Pitt sightings on the radio. Seven days a week, 24 hours a day. Well, he loves this area, and we're just really glad that, uh, you know, he wanted to get out of that Hollywood Smart man. Area, get to a place Smart that just, man. It's, it's therapy almost living oh, here. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. You know, really revitalizes you, know, you. I say this is paradise. This is one of the most beautiful places on the planet Earth, and I know I have a lot of people that agree with that. Yeah, I'm into that. Amen yep, to that. Yep. So, that's great. Well, Teeny, thank you so much for being here tonight. It's been a real pleasure to have you. Have we talked about everything we wanted to talk about? Heck no. Are you kidding? I mean, <laughs> oh, you 71 want to talk, years on the family you talked businesses. About, you guys just got an about. honor. The family just gone we did. Honor. Um, yeah. The city of Sand City just honored our family name in a street uh, after our family called Shake Avenue in Sand City. Great. And we're just very honored. Uh, again, you know, my mom and dad taught us that we receive in order to give. Yeah. And so everything, all my brothers, I'm so proud of all of them. And, you know, just great mom and dad. You know, 1991, Gary, um, I met Mother Teresa. Yeah, I remember in you Calcutta, told me India. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the one thing she wrote in my Bible was keep the joy of loving in your heart and share this joy with all you meet. Absolutely. Yeah, I'll tell you, that has really been such a phenomenal experience for us. You know, we didn't even have time to talk. We we should do it. He was at the White House when President Obama was in office. Very true. The only... Only he, chef out of Monterey at the White at House. At the White so. House, you were. What was the name of the chef at that time? That was, uh, Sam Cass was okay. the chef. Over so at Sam the, invited the you to come back, and then did you prepare a meal? Yeah, we prepared some items there, and uh, for the uh, uh, Obama family it was in 2009. I remember and, that. And uh, you know, just in, just an honor, and uh, you know, it, it's one of the things where. Just to be at the White House is such a privilege. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, the first president I ever voted for was Ronald Reagan. It's the first time I ever had a chance to vote. And I was so just loved what this man was doing. Yeah. And uh, so he was the very first president. So it didn't matter when you're at the White House, whether you're a Republican or Democrat, That's you're American. That's right. And, you know, we love our country. We love our people. We all have to work together uh, to make our country better. 
but united we stand. We're not yeah. divided, you guys. Yeah. And don't let anybody tell you that because yeah. we are Americans. You know, we have the Lee Greenwood song tonight on yeah. this show. So, Lee uh, Greenwood, powerful, you know, oh, powerful yes. song. So stay tuned for that. Teeny, thank you again, thank my you, friend. Thank you, I love it. I love it. So there. great to be with you, my old my friend here. I don't want to say old friend, but friend. He is an old friend. you look yeah. good, my friend. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Teeny, Teeny Shake, thank you so much for being here tonight. We're going to get back to the music now, and then we'll bring Juliana back. Do you remember that song? I do. Yeah. I do. Roxette. <laughs> So it must have you, been your, well. your your sister does the music Marlene, lesson. Marlene, my sister, is yes. doing all the music for me, so I don't have to do it. And she's digging down deep into the archives. And you know what I've asked uh, Dylan? Didn't I ask you, Dylan, to make up a list of some of the songs that you guys, you young people, listen to? Oh, yeah, I actually have thought of some. All right, so I need that list because we're going to have a segment mm -hmm. coming up next week that's okay. going to have all of the stuff that you guys, cause how old are you? He's 22. Okay. I said to, to uh, Dylan, can you come up with a list of a few videos so that the people your age that watch the show go, oh, yeah, I know that song, but all those songs that they play, I don't know any of those songs. It's good. That's it's, for the old people. <laughs> it's probably great music. Really great. Well, it's going to be interesting to see the list that Dylan brings up, and then we're going to put them on the air. And your sister, I, you, didn't you and her drive to the record hop back when you were doing oh, the honey, record? We, we, no. Let's we, take, maybe Marlene did the music on the mm -hmm. TV record hop when I was doing the dance party. Gary was the local Fresno, Dick Clark of in Fresno. Fresno and yes. Bakersfield. Yes. We'll yes. have to go pull one of those videos of me doing uh, the dance parties uh, many years ago. In fact, 60 years ago, <laughs> which was, but you know what? It was as much fun doing that then is doing this now. Yep. Can you believe that? That's why when I said I want to go do that music show again, you said, huh, what? No, I didn't. You said, well, no. I said, go for it. Yeah, that's exactly what you said. That's go what I said. It. Go, go for, for it. it. Let's this. All right. So, uh, hey, by the way, if any of you out there in TV land want to call in, we'll put you on the air. The phone number is 831-375-1919. Give us a call. Let us know uh, what you're doing. And, uh, uh, yeah, right there. There's there's our next guest. He's just, <laughs> he's just walking in the door, and he's, he's looking right here through the side That's window. That's where we were looking just now. <laughs> you know, I also want to say hello to Doug Lumsden. Doug was a big part of the support of our show on the studio and set. And he's going to be a big support of this show because Monterey Movie Tours is back. That's right. After being gone all through COVID. And I ran into Doug one day and I said, so what's going on? He says, I'm going to bring it back. I said, you sound like me. I'm bringing back the TV show. So you got to be a guest. <laughs> so he's going to be a guest here. And we're going to talk about the new Monterey Movie Tours. I think the price has gone up just a little. Oh, it's a great tour I mean, there. You know, it's the a fuel really is higher, fun. But fun. it's a great, great, yeah, it's a great tour. afternoon. I think it's about three hours, the Monterey Movie mm -hmm. Tours. Mm-hmm. And when we and we had the clip, remember the clip uh, from the Play Misty for me? That's right. He loaned us that clip so we could have Ted Baldestrieri on that show from twelve years ago. So just for those who haven't uh, didn't see the show back then, it's um, on YouTube. We're actually uploading the shows in their entirety right now. We're encoding them so you'll be able to kind of have a glimpse back. And, and that was Juliana's idea. She said, "Well, why don't we have all of the old shows on?" Uh, yeah, that's right. Now that we have YouTube, we can just do that. And we're in the process of putting some of these shows on, uh, the good shows. Because, you know, when we got started here, I don't know whether you remember when we started, hmm. we had some technical difficulties. Mm -hmm. And that happens when you're doing something brand new. We had a new studio. Thank you to Dave Johnson for pulling us through S on all that. Dave Johnson was yes. our guy way back then, and it was flawless. Yep. It yeah. was like big time TV when Dave was at the controls. He now we've fabulous. got a wonderful. We've got Mark Carbonero tonight and well, Dylan. Yeah. Who are, Dylan putting, Holmes is is back there, and uh, these guys are geniuses. Yeah, you know that things have changed so much with the controls. It's all digital now. It's all push this and push that and put the mouse on this and put the mouse on that and. Yeah. You know, we were talking recently about what it would be like if somebody from like the 1700s, 1800s had a cell phone dropped in front of them. Uh, uh, like, what would that have been like? Well, and it's like, like yeah. and so, and, and it's exciting you know, because the, so you, much is happening now in the virtual re reality, VR world. Uh, the so, AI world. The AI. But you know, so my much. favorite? What? Bring 
Orville and Wilbur back. Redenbacher? No, not Redenbacher. <laughs> no. <laughs> Orville and Wilbur on. Wright, the guys that invented oh, the airplane. I was thinking, thinking of popcorn. popcorn. <laughs> I'm hungry. Where's the popcorn? You're thinking of popcorn. No, Orville and Wilbur <laughs> that invented the airplane back in Kitty Hawk in 1903. Oh, that guy. Bring him down to Los Angeles International. We'll feed him and some put popcorn. Him, no. <laughs> Sorry. You're, Sorry. You're making me laugh. Put him on the end of the runway. And as those seven, well, the, what are they now? 737s come over the end of the runway. What, what do you think Orville and Wilbur Wright would think? Seeing those massive airplanes fly over. I know, over. I know. It's, it, it's and then you know what? It's 120 years ago. It's so wonderful to like look at actually the the benefits and gains and the strides of technology and how it's helped us. And here we're doing what we're doing with a lot of a lot of yeah, ease. Lot, so. Yeah, it's very yeah. They, people say, how do you do this? Oh, you get all this equipment, you put it together, and you send signals out over the air. And the key is we're sending them out on the internet. And that way, this show right now, anybody in the world can watch Monterey on tonight. That's right. Live on <laughs> Sunday nights from 6 to 9. When you were in Atlanta, you could watch it. Yeah, I did. 9 I to midnight. With the grandkids. I, I, 9 that's to right. midnight. Have that's to put right. the grandkids to bed. Yep. You want to say hi to them? <laughs> I was, yeah, you always have to say hi to your family, right? It's like, right. hi, Deanna. Yeah. Hi, Deanna. Hi, Sarah. Hi, hi Sarah. Audra. Hi, Adam Amber. and Alice. Okay, we're just going to go through all of our family. Mar Marlene, again, thank you, Marlene, Marlene for putting Marlene and Armin, this music my brother-in-law. So, yeah, and why Armin. not name all the family? <laughs> anyway, it's okay. been fun. We're just all having right. fun here. We are having a good time. Don't forget, if you want to call in, 831-375-1919. We'll put you on the air. Yeah, okay, back to the call. music. And our guest has arrived for the second hour, Mr. Bill Grimm from the Cannery Row Company, right. Executive Vice President. Okay, let's see. Is this Sea of Love, guys? It is. All right, let's go play Sea of Love by the Honey Drippers. Hi, I'm Shallow. I look forward to seeing you at my restaurant, Ellis at the airport in Watsonville. My goal is making your dining out experience the best you've ever had. We specialize in great pastas, pizza, panini, salads, desserts, and we serve some of the best cocktails ever. Local produce and seasonal products are featured because you deserve the best. I look forward to seeing you soon. When you do, tell me you saw me on Me TV. To us, pizza the way it ought to be isn't just our slogan. It's our promise and our passion to give you the best dining experience and the best tasting pizza you expect. For over 40 years, we've been making pizza the way it ought to be. Handmade with the freshest and finest ingredients. Our dough is made fresh daily and we use 100% whole California milk mozzarella cheese and toppings edge to edge. There's pizza and then there's Mountain Mike's Pizza. Pizza the way it ought to be. Original rock and roll. KFBY. Your favorite music of the 60s, 70s, and 80s with the Beach Boys and the Beatles. What you want it to be. Along with your favorite Motown. It's all right here on KMBY. Art LeBeau Evening on KMBY. The boss of the beach, KMBY. From Cannery Row, number one, KMBY. All right. You know, uh, our friends in Fresno tonight, Chris and Denise White, are watching the show. That KMBY is their radio station over on Cannery Row, and I've been telling them it's time that they move here, or at least part-time move here, because that's a 150-mile commute from Fresno, because I know you about You know it. they're watching. They're here, you Yeah, well, this. yeah, <laughs> of course I know. And I, I want them to get a place over here. we got to introduce them to Mr. Teeny, who was sitting in that chair, so they can find a really neat place. That's and they won't have to make that drive back. Well, actually, we're, uh, t today was the Salinas Food and Wine Festival. So it was? I think so. I think maybe they're, yesterday. Or was it yesterday? It so was yesterday. So they might still be here unless they drive no, back. No, I think they went Did back. Did they drive back? Did they oh. go back, Mark? They did. Oh, okay. Good bad. All right. Okay. Yeah. But anyway, that's their radio station. I was on that radio station two weeks ago. Okay. So let's say it again. What are those? KMBY. What's the channel on the dial? 
It's uh, 12.40 a.m., which okay. it used to be when I was there, and 95.9 FM. 95.9 FM. Yeah, see how to plug that. Yeah, well, eyes. good for you. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm looking out for my friends Jules here. is here to plug <laughs> oh. the radio station. <laughs> I am. Right. What did you say earlier? I said, when we were on the air in the old days, you used to poke me. <laughs> <laughs> Don't do that. You used to poke me. What were, you were poking me because I did something wrong or what? What are you talking about? Well. Oh, I always say you poke me because you, you make jest. You yeah, know how to well, jest that's with exactly, me. Yeah. yeah, that's what yeah, I'm talking about. Yeah, we're doing it tonight with yeah. such ease. It's fun. Yeah. so fun. Do you remember the old shows 12 years ago? Yeah. Can you remember that far back? <laughs> Can you? <laughs> of course I can. Where are we going? Thank you for watching Monterey on tonight. Appreciate yeah. It. We, we enjoy uh, having an audience out there. And, and, you know, what's great about it now is they don't have to watch on TV. They can watch on the Internet. Yeah. So why anyway. don't you give us a call and let us know where you're yeah, watching you're from. Yeah, if you're watching 375-1919, call us. We'll just, if you don't want to talk, I'll just say, hi, thank you for calling. Where are you calling from? What city are you calling from? And then yeah. we'll hang up so you don't have to give your name if you don't want to. I think there's a lot of people that are pretty shy, don't you? Yeah. About calling uh, into a yeah. radio or TV show. Yeah. Didn't you tell me that when you were a young woman that your uh, stepfather was a disc jockey? Yes, he was for 96 FM in Fresno. It was the top of the Security Pacific Bank building. He had the midnight to six shift, and I was 11 years old. And, and what was his name was on that? air? On air? On air. Uh, his, his name, Aaron Thompson. Aaron Thompson. Yeah. And so we... Uh, we had a great time, and did he, he taught me did how he to let you he turn the taught me how to run the board, how to take the meter readings, the teletype for the PSA. Teletype? Yeah, they had the teletype back then. Do you know, that's I don't even know if anyone will here know no. what a teletype. You is. say teletype to people that they go, huh? <laughs> it was like an uh, it was like a typewriter that actually was, it was a machine up, that, that had the news that on, had right? the news, but and it would then type they it would out. tear it off and they would read the news, news on air from yeah. the teletype. See, there's a lot of people out there today. That that even you say those words, they don't know what you're talking about. They really don't. Teletype? Mm -hmm. Really. You know what I did the other day? I was yeah. talking about Kodak. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's Do you know that there are a lot of young people that don't know what, what film Kodak. is? Mm -hmm. And I said, oh, let's just use my camera, click, click, Or click, how many digital. days you had to wait for them to get developed. You know, you know, you've it would take seven to ten days or so, unless you wanted to pay the extra fee, and then you'd have to it in four or five days. To get your pictures back. Yeah, to get your pictures back. It's, a, it's we yeah, that was have amazing. We come a and long Polar, way? Polaroid. Now, the Polaroid cameras did come out because the kids had yeah. kids had one. They, they actually brought them back for the kids. And you know, the but other day? Little, what? What? I asked someone if they knew what Fuller Brush was. I know, I didn't know what Fuller Brush was until you told me. <laughs> the Fuller Brush man would come to the door and sell these little mops and, and deodorant for the house and uh, uh, stuff to clean the drains. And everybody would welcome the Fuller Brush man into the house because he would always have goodies for the kids. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. So now I have a question. Is the Fuller Brush era the same era as the milkman dropping the milk yeah, off on the door probably yeah yeah okay because yeah. that you know that that real the communities were so yeah. close in those days and but there was they were more in contact the mailman actually came to your door and handed you, yeah, your, handed mail. you your mail yeah yeah the times wow. have changed yeah, it's interesting. you sent is this me a something reminiscing kind you of? sent me something that what? was really interesting and i sent it out uh as they say i shared it <laughs> um, yeah. You've been on Facebook. No, I, I don't do Facebook, but I did share what you sent me the other day, which was really interesting about. Um, okay. What was Shall it? Shall I fill the time in while you're looking? When for you it? realize that 1970 and 2022 are as far apart as 1970 yep. and 1918, I'm just going to need a minute. That's what it says. I said that to you, huh? Yeah, that you blew did. your mind. It yeah. did. 1918, 1970 is as much a part as mm -hmm. 1970 to 2022. Yeah. Scary. <laughs> no, it's exciting. It's yeah. all perspective. Yeah. All perspective. Thank you for watching Monterey and tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Give us a call. 831 375 1919. I'm Gary Morris. This is my partner here. Jules. She used to be known as Jules. Some people call her Julia. Some people call her Juliana. Or Julie. Or Julie. <laughs>
<laughs> you have a lot of names, don't you? <laughs> so, I don't know. It just depends on, you know. Yeah, whatever, whatever, uh, whatever's just, right what is, for the who moment. Said, who said, you can call me anything you want, just don't call me late for dinner? <laughs> That's an old line. All right, we got to roll it. Uh, we're going to play a couple of videos, That's and then we're going to bring on our next guest, Mr. Bill Grimm. So he'll be here right around the corner. Let's go to the next music video on the list, guys. You know, Bill, that brings a lot of memories back to a guy like me because that song, Since I Don't Have You, was from my high school days. Wow. By the Skyliners. Just a few years ago. Just a couple of years ago. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to introduce to you my good friend from the Canary Row Company, Mr. Bill Grimm. Gary. Welcome. Oh, it's great welcome, to see you. Welcome, welcome, welcome. It's a pleasure. And you know, Bill was on our old show, Juliana just reminded me, 12 years ago. So 12, 12 years, years ago. have gone by, and here we are doing the same old thing. Well, not only was it on your show, but I... Did a TV commercial you, with your daughter? You at did. Tin you Canary. did, and I just went to YouTube and I found it and I sent it. To All right. You. And Sarah, hi Sarah, hi Greg. They're back in Atlanta now. You know. Oh, okay, very good. With three children. Oh, fantastic. Yeah, we have a two and a half year old little boy, Atlas, and a six year old little girl, Autumn, and a eight year old little girl. Audra Bell. Well, the so you know the family's gotten bigger. That's fantastic. So it's so nice to see you and have you here on the show. I'm so honored because this man, believe me, he he needs to spend some time out talking to groups and telling them about all of the things you have done in your career. Uh, California Pizza Kitchen is one of them, right? Many years ago, many, yes. Many yes. years ago, and then you were at um, help me. Baskin Robbins. Baskin Robbins. Yeah. And the coffee company. Uh, Glory Jeans Coffees, yeah, Glory Glo Jeans globally. Co yeah. Oh, man. And then somehow the Lord brought him to Monterey, <laughs> California. I don't know how it happened, but he ended up at the Canary Row Company. And how many years now? Jeez, uh, Gary, it's been a little over 22 years now. 22 yeah. years at the Canary Row Company. Yeah. And he has it's done more for this city with his expertise because he goes out and finds the people that bring their businesses down to Canary Row and all of the area that Canary Row Company yeah, owns. But we got a great team. We really, it's a great company. We got a great team. You know, Ted Ballastory is a fantastic leader. Oh, he is. Uh, so, you know, it's you just, know, he was on our old show. We yes. have to get him back on the on the new show yeah, now. Yeah, it, it's fantastic. Yeah. Yeah, yeah absolutely. So, so you've got... And you've got the young boys there now, too. You've got the uh, Teddy and, um, and Vince. And Vince. Vincent, yes. Val Destrary, yeah. uh, Ted's ten Ter sons. Terrific kids. Yeah. And how's my friend Bert doing? Bert's doing fantastic. You Good. know, I just saw, I had a wonderful conversation with him Friday, and he told me he's a great storyteller, and uh, he's got these incredible stories. He told me a story about how he knew the number one chef in all of France, uh, and You're how kidding. it was Paul Bacuse. Paul Bacuse. Who owned La Berge du Pont, his restaurant La in, du Pont. In, in Lyon. Lyon oh, is the goodness. gastronomic capital yeah. of France. And uh, Bert said that he, when Paul came to the States the first time, Bert took it upon himself. He was a member of the American uh, Culinary Institute. In fact, he headed it up and he put together a plaque for Paul and oh, presented it to him. Wow. And wow. years later, he went to Lyon with Fred Dane. Our sommelier yep, from, yep, the sardine from the factory, sardine factory, right? And with his son, uh, Mark. And uh, as he was w entered, he looked to the right where there was many, many plaques, and he said, "There's the plaque that he gave Paul." Bacuse. All those years before, he was so respected. Uh, oh Bert my Coutinho. goodness! Bert yeah. is just well, an Bert incredible human being. and Ted. If those of you that don't know, started the sardine factory in, I believe it was 1971. 68. 68, Wait, okay. I missed it. By, all right. October 2nd, 1968. Well, see, you know all that stuff. Don't ask me the time. Yeah. <laughs> but they opened the doors at the sardine factory. And if you go to YouTube, you'll find the old, Mon go to Monterey on tonight the, uh, at YouTube, and you'll find the old show. And Bert was our guest that oh. night, and he tells the story on that show of how the sardine factory started, how Clint Eastwood came and said, hey, I want to use your restaurant for my movie play Misty for me. It is probably one of the best interviews that I have ever done. It's, uh, you know, that incredible story, Play Misty for me, was the first movie that Clint ever directed. Directed. 
And of all the celebrities, they've had presidents there, President Clinton and government, uh, Schwarzenegger's governor, and, and athletes, star athletes, and so many significant people at the Sardine Factory. All down in that beautiful belly of the restaurant. The wine cellar. Yep. Uh, you know, it's a, when I first joined the company, I went to the Sardine Factory. I told Ted, I said, Ted, this is an incredible place. It has multiple places within a place. Yes, it does. You can go there five different times and have five different experiences. It's that incredibly you got the wine cellar which is they have a world fantastic they were rated number one for a selection of over 20,000 bottles of wine and uh uh you know then you got the captain's room yep you've got the lounge where they got music every night yep you got private rooms but the uh the uh, most incredible building is the um, captain's room no 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 not nothing it's the atrium the oh, atrium, the atrium. Where, yeah, yeah. The, the, um, that's my favorite yeah have you got pictures I, I, I it's too bad we I, didn't. Did we load anything uh, from uh, we from? We have some pictures. I don't know if those same ones are talking about. Right well, we we'll, we'll call them out to you, and uh, if you can find them, put them on the screen. Yes, it's actually called the conservatory. Actually, ah, the conservatory. And I, we were there. Fri Marion and I took our grandson Maxime and his girlfriend to uh, the Blondine to the to the conservatory. Well, to the conservatory, but and it, it was light, and as it goes oh. on, the evening gets dark, but the ambiance is second to none the presentation is second to none yeah, and of course so the food is the, the best. only restaurant where they bring you an ice sculptor it's a swan it's, it's a, a swan, swan with a sorbet yeah, to yeah. prepare your Change. palate oh you're preparing your palate now do you know that restaurant the sardine factory sent me an invitation to come back for my birthday with a huge discount so sign up at the sardine factory so you when it's your birthday you get the certificate that gives you a huge discount off your meal it's because we're going to take advantage of it oh, julianne and i are going to it's take an incredible experience yeah we we actually went down into the wine cellar and uh, maxime sat in one of the chairs on this 25 oh. foot redwood uh, table it seats 20 and i uh, was kidding him i said no i think that's the same seat that President Ronald Reagan sat in. Now, at that time, he was governor of California. Governor. But uh, so he, it was just a wonderful experience. All of this right here in Monterey, California on Cannery yeah, Row. Yeah. All right, so you've got some other stuff to talk about. What's going on? Well, Cannery Row. Cannery Row. I mean, the world famous historic Cannery Row. It's uh, just incredible. You know, Isn't that where that KMBY radio tower well, is? We do have a two <laughs> FM st uh, AM stations now on our tower. Uh, KMBY being one. It's uh, oh six thirty uh, AM KIDD did a terrific job. Yeah, They're doing fantastic. Yeah. But Canary Row is you know it's the number one visitor attraction in the central coast of all of California. There's like just under we did a, a, a we just checked it with uh, modern technology just under six million foot oh traffic an goodness. annually. Nobody comes close from Ventura County down all in Los way. Angeles all the way to Gilroy, Gee, Santa Barbara, uh, Santa Cruz. Nobody comes close. Well, I was down there last week, and I couldn't even find a parking place. I had to go around and That's around. one of the challenges for our guests. Yeah. But what we're doing, we're transitioning. About 2018, I joined a, uh, IAPA. It's International Association of Attractions. Because I wanted to see how can we get more fun into Canada yeah, Row. Yeah. And I met, I met some incredible people at these conferences. And we ended up doing a deal in the old IMAX theater. Oh, yes. Monterey uh, Fly and Dive. It's oh. going to be a virtual reality ride that will open up sometime in 23. COVID has pushed it back a yeah. little bit. But it's going to be a top virtual reality ride. The company is the best in the world. The filming company that's going to have developed the films is number one in Hollywood. Oh, down goodness. In Laguna. Wow. So we got that coming on. We've got a, another concept in the old Steinbeck Wax Museum below Sly McFly's. It's going to be called Treasure Hunt. And it's the old... Something for everyone. It's the old Bouchard. Remember Bouchard, yes. the only privateer who had yes. a land, sea battle in the history of California? And it's the story where you, you get in your cart and you it's dark. And also the lights go on, you shoot targets. And it's oh, 11 wow. stops like that. And it's going to be an incredible, incredible attraction. Okay, this is all the coming attractions. This is this will be opening. We hope they're hoping by the end of the year, December. Okay. Uh, any new restaurants down there? New restaurants. We got the Salty Seal that just opened up and just below KMBY. That was during COVID. They're doing fine. Cause salt. And, that's kind of a cute name, Salty yeah. Seal. Yeah, they got wonderful. There's a lot of entertainment evening. They got yeah. entertainment evenings. And so does Sly McFly. It's it's sort yeah. of world famous. Uh, but we also have the mirror maze yet and the laser maze. It's doing well. 
And this is all for the whole family. That's why people love to come to Canary Row, because there's something for everyone. But I'll tell you what I want to talk about tonight, all right. Gary. You've got the floor. I want to talk about Oscars attractions. Oscars attractions. Uh, Oscars, the, yes. Uh, oh, there it is. Oscar. It's on Oscars the screen. Oscars Playground. Oscars it's, Playground. So you know, what is remember, that? Remember the old Blue Fin space? Yeah. In the Steinbeck yeah. One Building? It's yeah. on the third level. It's the largest entertainment venue in the central coast of California, just under 11,000 square feet. Uh, Put that back, guys. I want to read what was on the marquee. Yeah, that's Okay, uh, so fun for the whole family, arcade, lounge, escape rooms. What's an escape room? Escape room? Where you, you go into a room with your friends or your family, and you're, you, you're give, given a couple clues, yeah. but you've got to somehow escape. Out of that room. Oh, they lock you in. They there's lock a, you there's in. There's a way to get out of that room. Oh, wow. And you have, I think it's usually 45 minutes to an hour to get out. Oh. And if you, you know, and, and so the same, they're going to have escape rooms there. They already, uh, the Riddicks, who yeah. uh, have as our tenant there, they have escape rooms right next to the sardine factory. Incredibly successful. But this is going to be an incredible, incredible. This uh, is something area. new then. Oscars Playground. It opened up uh, two weeks ago. Uh, it's a must-see. It's a must-see. The fun, the arcades that are there, the entertainment, the photo opportunities. Uh, I can't recommend a place to have fun more than Oscar's Playground, right at the heart of Prescott and Canary Row. And this is the guy that is bringing those businesses to this well, area. it's a team. Oh, it, it's really, I, yeah, it's a but team. Bill, look. Okay, no, it's, it's a team. Yeah. But you're the guy. I, I, I you're am a guy. the guy. You're I am the guy. guy. You're the guy that gets them in there and... <laughs> And makes them say, "Oh, please, can we come to Canary Row? We want to be here." Yeah, no, it's it's a really. A, I've had uh, salespeople work for me. Did a great job. We got attorneys. We've got assistants. We got leaders, senior leadership. It's a whole team effort. And it takes do. a while to put these deals together. Some can take a while, yes, especially during COVID. You know, yeah, that was a challenge. But I, I'm proud to say that the team, as a team, we are 100% leased on street level on oh, Canary Row. And goodness. I don't know any. Anybody in the area of Northern California that can say that. So, so what really is your of official title now? I am the chief operating officer of the company. COO. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, there you see there's the, the bar the, in Oscar's Playground. That's beautiful. Isn't that incredible? Uh, Oscar's the, Playground. And that's, what a is fo- that's a photo op. Isn't that a great photo op is up there in the area? You take yeah. a photo and you walk around. The kids will love it. Bring them in there and get your camera yeah, out. There's uh, another little photo op on your way. I think it just goes to the escape rooms. But they've, uh, they've done a wonderful job. The decor and the attractions they brought in. And um, the bar with the you know basic beverage. You can buy some uh, r- r- memories. Uh, memories some, uh, of your trip to Canary Row. Well, memories of Oscar's Playground. Oh, of Oscar's. Yeah, that's up there in Oscar's. So. Okay, but it says Canary Row there, too. Well, it does say Canary Row. Yeah, look at, look at the fun games. And yeah. this is just a small portion of this whole huge space. It's, Amazing. it's just terrific. Amazing. And you can get up there through an elevator going all the way up from the street level. Here's some more arcades uh, along the windows. Uh, Boy, the kids! You could park the kids there for hours. Oh, absolutely! If yeah. Mom and Dad went to the aquarium. There's a lounge area. There's the lounge it's area beautiful. just to relax. And now, see, until tonight, I've been down there on Canary Row. I did not know this existed. Well, I now I do. You'll be there next week. I will go down. I want to take a tour. <laughs> Will you give me a tour? Sure. All absolutely. right. I want to see this absolutely. with my own eyes. There's the entrance, and you uh, you can also walk up steps as well as take the uh, elevator es- from street level all or the way the up. Escalator. Or the escalator. Or the escalator, correct. That's great. So there's a lot of exciting things. We want to make more fun, have more fun on Canary Row and br- bring more the people. The Canary in. Row Company. I understand we're, being, we're streaming globally. We are, yes, around the world. Around anywhere the world. in the world they could watch with KMBYTV.com. They could watch anywhere in the world. That's what fantastic. we are doing right here, right now. Wow, fantastic. In Monterey, California. That's and your wife, Marianne, is watching. Mary, uh, yeah, I think she's probably watching. What yeah. do you mean you think? Well, I'm sure she is. <laughs> yeah. yeah no, Hi, Marianne. <laughs> You can call us, Marianne, and we can, you can talk to Bill if you'd like to. It's three seven five one nine one nine, and he can tell you what time he'll be home if you want to do that. Right? There sure, it is. Absolutely. There's a number on the screen. Absolutely. And yeah, we'll answer the phone. We'll say, hi, Marianne. How you doing? Yeah, there you go. What else you got over here? You brought a whole bunch of paperwork. No, work. that was the, oh, the Sardine that Factory, it? Canary Row, the history of Canary Row. You know, John Steinbeck certainly made it famous. Uh, oh, let's talk about Ed Ricketts. Oh, you want to talk about talk, uh, yeah. Ed Ricketts? Let's talk Doc about Ed Ricketts. Ricketts because, as you know, William and Angela Ricketts are in town from yeah, Australia. And right. We had the, the pleasure of meeting with Eric Utman. 
Upman, our, our vice president, VP of yeah, marketing. Yeah, the guy who does all the marketing. Yeah, good, and good uh, we we pitched an idea. William and I pitched an idea about an Ed Ricketts festival down on Cannery Row. Now, those of you that don't know anything at all about Ed Ricketts, go Google him. He was quite a guy. He was written in the Cannery Row book by John Steinbeck. Yeah. And there is still a lab down on Canary Row called Doc Ricketts Lab. The, the Pacific Biological Paci Lab. Let's yep. Say that again. Pacific Biological, Biological Lab. Lab yeah. Which is, you know, Doc Ricketts the original, Lab. The, the original. original lab. And I heard, though, that the state of California came in, because William and I were talking about this, and they won't let the guys who used to meet there now meet because it doesn't have ADA handicap entrance to the lab. Yeah, it's, uh, so they had to go meet at somebody's house. Now, how do we fix that, Bill? Well, it's, uh, that's, a, that's a fair question. It's unfortunate that we have uh, the situation. But uh, Ed Ricketts was an incredibly you know, a good friend of John Steinbeck's, as you mentioned. But he predicted when the we were the sardine capital of the world here in Monterey. Uh, and, uh, you know, the, by the way, the sardines in, in Monterey, a typical sardine is six inches. The Monterey sardine was 12 inches, mm. twice as large. And in 35 to 45, we were the capital. But Ed said, listen, you need to slow down because the pH is shifting in the water. And if you don't slow down, you're going to fish lose, it dry. You're going to lose, yeah. And in a two-year period, listen to this, it went from 200,000 tons of sardines to 2,000 tons. Oh, my God. A 99% drop. And he absolutely predicted that. He predicted that. it. Well, he was but, a biologist. Well, he knew and, what he know, was doing. No one wanted to be the first just to give it up. And yep. so that's what happened. So. Yeah. Uh, what yeah. happened to the sardines on Cannery Row? Yeah, they got canned and they got shipped away. <laughs> but what's what's amazing about Cannery Row is that it was such a capital of an industry, yeah. the sardine industry, and today, it's a capital of tourism. Tourism, commercial. Six where, where million seen, people. Where, where have you seen a street that did a 180 oh. flip from industrial to there, commercial? There you go. It and just, Ted Balistrieri. Our had chairman the, of the board the and co-owner of the Sardine Factory is the primary yeah, factor for that. He had the vision he led for that. what that would look like. Yeah. Here we are in 2022. Correct. And uh, and again, the the aquarium down there, it gets well, like 4 million visitors. Just no, for, no, no, no. How many? 1.8 million visitors. 1.8 million and to we, the... And we have 5.5 vis uh, right. on Can Row. So, so 6 million. So, so you the, actually, you guys draw out draw the, the oh, aquarium. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. They're a great addition to the row. No doubt about it. But we were able to show that you know people come to the road just to see Cannery Row. There's so much available there, yeah. day, evening, weekends. Well, next so, time you guys plan your trip over to the Monterey Peninsula, plan on Cannery Row. That's one of the best spots to take the family, enjoy your day, spend uh, spend a couple of days down there. Oh, there's yeah. A, there's enough to see. To well, we have wonderful hotels on there, and, and the, the uh, Spindrift Inn right on oh, Canary Row was beautiful voted views of the bay. twice by TripAdvisor the most romantic hotel in the United States. And so bring your sweetheart. Well, yeah, absolutely. Well, bring your wife. Right bring on your the sweetheart. water. We yeah. got the Safe Travel and Tourism Award during Gee, COVID. Was. One of only 400 in the world at the time, which is quite remarkable yeah. for tourism. And uh, well, uh, you World know, Health Organization. Bill, uh, listen, you are one of my favorite people here on the Monterey Peninsula. Wow. No, no kidding. That's quite an honor. Now, you are, and we, we we go back a long way now. <laughs> and we've had lots of cups of coffee together. We talk <laughs> about a lot of things. Okay, uh, I think it's time for us to get back to the music. Thank you for your attendance. It's a, really a pleasure, Gary. Thank you. Pleasure to have you here. My pleasure. And. Um, We'll get back to whatever the next song is. I kind of lost track, I was where, where are we? Creedence Clearwater. Creedence Clearwater. Do you want me to sing? <laughs> if you want to come on and sing, that's too. That's a, a, a good evening to have you and I sing. Well, you know what? We'll go to the karaoke at, uh, at one of these places around town, and you go first, and I'll go second. How's that? <laughs> All right, back to the music, guys. Thanks once again, Bill. My pleasure. Aaron Neville and Linda Ronstadt. And, you know, Linda Ronstadt's voice is just beautiful. And one of my favorites, uh, along with Karen Carpenter, too. Yeah. And now if you say those two names to young people, they go, who? 
Okay. Linda who? So I can say that and I'll be young, right? Who? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'll, listen, if you want to be younger now, just play ignorant. I don't know. Who is that? <laughs> thank you for watching Monterey on tonight. And thank you to Mr. Bill Grimm from the Cannery Row Company for sharing and re reminding us at how much is uh, available for us here um. to meet as a community and support our local community. And if you live out of the Monterey area, uh, make the trip out yeah, yeah it's a wonderful destination so yeah. yeah those of you that are in 104 105 degree weather tonight over in the san joaquin valley well, i don't know is what's it the weather hot today? what's the weather right let me now. find out <laughs> he's gonna let find the weather you. while we do let's this. see how hot it was today in fresno <laughs> i always love to do that fresno fresno see, that's where we're from originally okay it wasn't too bad today it was in the 90s no here Oh, here? Yes, here. Oh, I thought you wanted to no, know. You are, we know it's hot in, in uh, the South Well, it was Valley. in the we 70s today. 70s, yeah, yeah 65, see? 65, 70. So come on out. It's going to be 70 all week long. Fresno is going to be. Let's see what Fresno is going to be all week. Your local weather report. Yes. <laughs> local weatherman. <laughs> Fresno, Fresno, Fresno. What is the weather? Do you remember uh, also when uh, when I was back in radio, we do the time check. Yeah, time, it's, it's seven forty-five. It's seven forty-seven oh, actually. Well, that, you that, you that, better change well, that yeah, clock. Yeah, I got to change that clock. It's a couple of minutes slow. That must have happened while we were out this it's last week. It's the batteries. Week. Is it the batteries? Yes, the batteries. Oh, okay. Yes. So let's see. Um, you wanted to know Fresno. It's ninety-two degrees right now in Fresno mm -hmm. at seven forty-seven at night. Can you do your radio voice like from back at? You know, sure. the weather. Uh, Can you, you know, do it? Okay, oh, I want yeah. to hear it. I, I think hear? this might be fun, okay? It's 747 on Canary Road. This is Gary Morris, and we're here till midnight tonight. We're playing all the hits for you. <laughs> That's great. You like that? Oh, that was fun. I did that two weeks ago down on yeah. Canary Row. I was yeah. I was Gary Morris on the radio. That's Hadn't true. been down there for 60 years. You know what? I had In to, the same space. Okay, and, and just how full circle everything is, isn't it? Yeah. Now you, you know, and Denise and Craig, all the call letters are back in the in the family. And, yeah. and, you know, we're talking about full circle in the green room because, and kind of have a little surprise for you. Oh, okay. Okay. So this is your birthday week. So you get a, little, a lot of little surprises. So um, Charlie and I were talking and he asked me did you have somebody working for you about 15 years ago and and he just started describing and i'm like i used to be blonde <laughs> and he's like oh now i'm not that going was to you. okay ha, that it, literally we were like in tears when we tracked that that a moment in time oh. how it circ destiny the universe circled us back around to where we were sitting in the green room, oh, and you got to hear this story. It's really fun. Yeah. So anyway, as Paul Harvey would say, the rest of the story. That's right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, Charlie is our account executive at KMBY, also KMBY AM and FM, but he's also MeTV Monterey, uh -huh. our AE. Such a great guy. So in my after um, Steve, can he come in and tell you the rest of the story? Yeah, we sure, okay. of course. We they can, can meet. Yeah, they can meet. We'll, we'll put him in your chair and yeah. he can tell the story. You know, he's been a guest on the show he has. in the early days when we first started oh. seven weeks ago. Yeah. I think he might have been on the first show. Okay. Yeah. Charlie, were you on in the first show? We'll get him out here and you can ask him. Yeah, okay. Okay. I, I think and he, he can, And it's yeah. a great story. Okay, great. Well, so he thought you no, were I, a different person? Well, it was me. He and I had met before. Oh. And the story of what happened oh. in that moment and life circumstances, life circumstances oh. that, uh, that now we're all back. And it started with the station. We met. I'm not going to spoil it. Well, I'm going to let you, him but tell you it. you know what? It, it's really a cool story. It really, what we would does. not have this show here at the Seaside Sand City Chamber of Commerce if it wasn't for Jim Vossen, who we met at the AMP building yes. on Garden Road when we had our studios for KYMB there. Right. So all of this is coming like full circle. Here we are at the Chamber of Commerce. We're in this studio here at the Chamber. Mm -hmm. And that was all brand new when we decided to do it again. Yeah. And Jim said, sure, come on in. Let's have fun. Mm -hmm. See, he had the same philosophy Jim does. V as in Victor, O-S-S-E-N. And Jim did the Monterey Bay Morning Show on our Channel 19 Comcast, KYMB, Channel 27.1, where MeTV is now. And, uh, I, in fact, I was just pulling up the YouTube video mm -hmm. of Jim doing the Monterey Bay Morning Show. Good right. morning, good morning. <laughs> that was a, yeah, 
He sure did. You remember that? What was the yeah, Access Monterey Peninsula? What was the program that Jim and Mary Lou? Uh, uh, your town. Your town. Yeah, they did it five oh, days a week. That such a service to the community. Yeah. Remember, Gina Renee was one of the hosts. Mm-hmm. He had Jim picked out a different host for every show. He produced and directed that show, and it was simulcast on KNRY twelve forty. That what they call letters in those days. KNRY AM twelve forty, and on AMP channel twenty seven. And I got a phone call the other day from this very irate lady. What? Yeah. What happened? What did you do with channel twenty seven? My shows are not on there anymore. Gary. <laughs> She's probably watching it. <laughs> well, she what got. Was it? What was she? Well, she, she's confused with our channel twenty-seven <gasps> oh, over the air oh and my. the amp channel oh, no. twenty-seven. No, really. So she was calling us oh. to find out what happened to her shows on oh, amp. That's right. Yeah. Oh. So she, poor thing, oh. she was confused. So I'm going to have you call her back. <laughs> Me? <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna have you do it. <laughs> Hi, uh, this is Channel 27. I'm so sorry. Okay, okay. I, I, yeah. yeah, let me call her. You call her. Yeah, I'll call Explain her. Explain what went wrong. <laughs> okay, you got There's it. There's two Channel 27s. One's on cable and <laughs> one's over the air, and on cable channel 19. That's another confusing thing. What? Because this is Channel 19.4 mm-hmm. with the music videos on KMBY. And then over on channel 19 cable, Comcast, is MeTV. So see, there's two 19s mm-hmm. also. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I'm sorry. It's just very confusing. This is a very confusing business. <laughs> <laughs> you know that. Yeah. And I know that. All right, let's get back to more music. We'll uh, chatter about something crazy. In the, You'll the, have to get Charlie in and talk about I will. Yeah, I'll bring okay. Charlie in okay. and we'll talk yeah, about so it. Okay, back way. to the music, guys. Mr. Stevie Wonder, and I just called to say I love you. That's a great old song. Ah, This is Mr. Charlie Byers, and he is our account executive at KMBY AM, KMBY FM, and KMBY TV. And me TV. How did all that happen? I don't know. You just walked in one day, and here you are. Sort of. Yeah. Well, you were we, watching me TV. You well, told me you were watching me TV, and you wanted to find out where did these guys emanate from, and you drove by here and you saw the me TV sign on the building, and you stopped in, right? I came to talk to Jim. Yeah. But let's go back a little further, even. All right. How did I start watching me TV? Uh, how did you, where, Charlie? How did, I, how did you start how did watching me TV? Out about me how TV? did you do it? Well, there was a little hint given just a little bit ago by. Uh, someone you know pretty well. Ah. Uh, it used to be Jules and yeah. Juliana. Yeah. So, uh, funny story and how life uh, just comes around like it this. Sure does. So, we, uh, we had the uh, first uh, child had outgrown some of the girl type dolls, Barbies, and horses and nice things. And That's your, your, kind of your gonna, oldest, oldest child now. Child. Yeah, we're going to get, get rid of some of these things and thinking about, you know, what are we going to go through? Well, it turns out Juliana was looking for some things for I think the Audra or the, Autumn, couple, the little one? A l- couple little ones who were coming uh, to visit. Yes. And wanted to get some and came over to our house oh. and got these dolls and horses. Oh and my said this goodness. is perfect. Thinks she thinks she thinks she still has them. Oh my goodness. And so I didn't know she, that. And I, and well, I, I wasn't yeah, sure. Who so, it was. so, and I, so and that was when she was a blonde, though. And she was a blonde. And, and so she she got the little. horses and the goodies she got those, and for she, the grandkids that were coming to visit to us. Visit to play with. Uh, and gave and that was me, at your house, at my house, up at, up the yeah, up up from the Cannery Row up the hill. And she gave me uh, a card from right next door here to our Seaside Studio. With uh, Jose's restaurant, Mexican restaurant, oh, a little coupon, oh. and she said, "Go have with lunch. Me TV here, have this coupon." I said, "Oh, that's so nice. You're already getting the things. You're gonna give us? Oh no, really? Go see him." And with Me TV, this channel plays all the great the old song. shows you, you didn't know, know and, about Me TV. And so until I started. She told I became you. a Me TV nut. Oh, an addict. Wow. So I what still a, am, and I watch what this song all the time. World. See, and, uh, it's uh, uh, that's uh, the so, universe. And then I. I found out. I saw the ads, and uh, my my folks, my friends over at the Pacific Grove Bottle Shop, uh, I would go into there and say, you know, doing some funny voices and doing my, you know, my my Rodney, and say, hey, 
let's do a little ad for you guys saying i never got respect no i got a, uh, i got a respect right. in the bottle shop yeah. so uh we we're running yeah that but that's i came down here uh, found out about that me tv and kmby were are are connected over here we're all in the same all area in the so same building it's one happy family yep. and uh so I said well let's get it going on the radio and we'll get on the tv but how about that That's aren't you aren't you charlie aren't you aren't you ecstatically happy that you got into the media side of the business isn't this a fun business this is a very fun business as yeah. as we all say there's yeah. no business like a like show, show business. business like no, <laughs> no business, business I, know. I know no it's so it's much kinda, fun it's kind of like show business it's isn't it's it? like show business a yeah. lot but it's also i spent i said i spent all those years coming looking around and saying this company that business this business what can we do how can i help them i can see them doing a little better yeah and now i'm in a position where with you and we can and help you, and you know those what business and that feels great you know what brings, really feels good. brings joy to my heart mm. is that when we get a client for our me tv station as we did shallow over in right. s s in watsonville i see her ads on me tv all, all the time the yep, yep. at the watsonville airport and she closes that spot by saying and tell me when you see me, you saw me on me TV. Mm -hmm. And do you know how many people now are going into her restaurant, Ella's at the airport they in Westville, and yeah. they are saying, "We, we saw, saw you, you on me TV." TV. Well, that's why I tell Jose uh, over here. That's why I'm here, guys. Me yeah. TV. Me TV. That's the only reason. So, I'm if you are a here. business, I'm going to do my first commercial pitch of the whole seven weeks. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. If you are out there and you own a business. And you would like to be on radio, KMBY AM or FM. If you'd like to be on KMBY TV, you can sponsor this show. We are looking for sponsors to help us do this Sunday night show. you got to pay the or, bills. That's right. Pay the power bill. Or Charlie's favorite network, MeTV. He will come out personally to your business and tell you how you can be on television, just like Shallow at Ella's at the airport. And if you don't think it's working, you guys call Shallow. Go in to see her at the airport. She'll tell you how effective. And I get tremendous response. Me TV yeah, is Me TV gets because we response. have a lot of people watching Me TV. Maybe not so many people watching this show, but who cares, right? We're, we're getting there. We'll we're get getting there. there. We'll get yeah. there. Yeah, yeah. We're getting this all this great uh, content and these wonderful guests. Great My guests. Gosh, look. In fact, Charlie, I tell tonight. you what I'm going to do. I was just telling Juliana today. Every co-host since we started and every guest since we started the show, we are going to have a Monterey on Tonight reunion party. Oh, We're going nice. to get everybody together in a room probably after about 24 shows because that's a half a year. Okay. No. Okay. How many people is that? If we had three guests and one co-host per show times 24 It'll be 72, I think. We'll it get a pretty right good size there. room, right? So that's what we <laughs> need a bigger room. Yeah. yeah. And but they're not going to fit <laughs> here, fit that's here. for sure. But, you know, and we'll probably serve them Mountain Mike's Pizza. Good old Mountain we'll, Mike's. We'll, Thank you, Mountain we'll, Mike's, again. Yes. We'll even do better than that when we have our reunion party. So we're going to start working on that right now, Charlie. Okay. we got to figure it out. I'm head to the next room and get going on it. Yeah, we gotta go get okay. your notepad out. we got to start. Well, Gary, this guy always comes up with something. Now he wants to do a reunion party. And it's not just the people that have been on the show and coast. It's anybody else that wants to be part of this community. It's some a, some of your wannabes. Well, I'm just telling about your next uh, guest who's coming up here. Great, yeah. great young guy, and and just how it's so nice to <clears throat> get to know. Every, and this show's doing it now. Yeah, it is with all the guests we have on, and and some amazing folks in the community. Yep. To just tonight alone, and getting to know them all, getting to, and the community and coming together. It, it is a close community. It is, and Steve is connected with this car week coming up. Yep. He knows all about what's going to happen, so you stay tuned. Nothing if you like want to know week. about Car Week in Monterey, people come in from all over the area. I mean, how many people do they get on Car Week? I don't know. Mark, Mark's a big car guy Mark, back how there. many people uh, show idea? up here for Car Week? Is this one of the biggest events, Car it Week? the biggest event of the year. Biggest event of the year, probably, I've heard estimates as high as 150,000 people uh -huh. come to the peninsula. 
Not all at once. Yeah, but over the the, of the week. Yeah. Well, we're going to ask Steve Kittrell. He'll be here in a few minutes. We'll have him on the air. You stay tuned. He knows. I'm going to give him the third degree. (laughs) All right, Steve, tell me about Car Week. Charlie, thanks for showing up in here, and that's a great story about you and Juliana. How about <laughs> and that? The, and the rocking horse? Hey, little horses, little 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 horses to play with, and, and some Barbie dolls. Isn't in that too. something yeah. amazing? <laughs> All right, guys, let's thanks. get back to the music, and then we'll get our next guest in here. Wow, wow, wow! All the way back to the Duprees, and you belong to me. And I don't know how many versions of that song have been done over the years, but again, for the uh, elderly. <laughs> Like me, I love that song. I love that song. You belong to me. I want to welcome my next and final guest for tonight, Mr. Steve Kittrell. Hi, Gary. How you doing, buddy? I'm doing great. Thanks for having and me. Thanks. Thank you for being here. And you know what a small world this is? He walks in, Steve walks in tonight and goes, hey, hi, Mark. Mark Carbonero, who is our <laughs> guy behind the scene here, or one of the guys behind the scenes tonight. They used to work together over at Clear Channel 15 years ago, right? That's right. That's how I first started here on the peninsula. I was working for Clear Channel, doing radio and broadcasting. So it's full I, circle. I first, And I had no idea that this guy was in the media business way back then until tonight. Because they knew each other. What a small world. Anyway, Steve has segued, as they say in our business, to his own business, Valache Valuations. What a great name. Now, there's a reason that you called it Valache Valuations. Tell everybody why. Well, it means fast in Italian. Yeah. And um, in the car business, um, you try to go fast. Yeah. And everything I do, I try to do quick and, and do a good job as well. Amazing. Absolutely amazing. Yeah. And I didn't know anything at all about Steve other than someone had given me his name and said, why don't you have this young man on your show? Because he knows just about everything that you would need to know about Car Week. And Car Week is coming up, and as Mark said to me, probably 150,000 people show up for Car Week. Right. And it's coming up. If you guys are out there and you want to be part of there's a car going by right now, part of... <laughs> well, we're on the eve, right, Gary? We're, we I mean, are on the eve. So tell us now... What is first, Steve? What comes first? So Car Week is, is stretched from, you know, 25 years ago from a weekend. Um, you know, Car Week weekend rolling into Pebble Beach to, you know, now really a full two weeks. Wow. So we really kick things off starting on Friday with the Pasadera Concord de Elegance, which is, is that, the golf course. That was this last Friday or coming up? Coming up on oh, this Friday. Oh, okay. Coming up this Friday. Okay. So then Pasadera is the first event. First event. And what happens out there? Well, it's just a nice kind of a locals concours de elegance. So they pile in about 50 cars into the courtyard. I'm showing two cars there. We're a sponsor. And um, what cars are you going to show? A 1984 Ferrari 512 Uh BBI and a 2003 Aston Martin DB9 AR Zagato bodied. Oh, my God. So it's a couple of special cars there. And then that rolls into uh, things that happen at the racetrack. And then we would normally have Concord on the Avenue early on the week, but unfortunately that event's not happening Now, this th- year. tell me, I heard of a few rumors about that. Uh, they used to have Concord uh, on the Avenues in Carmel, right? They right, right down, down Ocean. Closed down Ocean. Mm-hmm. But something I heard through the grapevine, there was some something that they were concerned about. Was it traffic? What was it that made them decide not to do it? Well, you know, I don't want to throw the city of Carmel under the bus necessarily, but they they didn't necessarily want more car events going on in their uh. in their town. So when the creator of the show passed away this last year, mm. it was a good opportunity for them to just so, kind of have a clean break. Yeah. And sometimes shows and events go away with the people that started. That's true. It's all about people. It really is. And and with him not being able to make those phone calls and, and have that hand-to-hand invitation, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, it's disappointing. Now, the rumor also is that a lot of people are just going to show up 
on Tuesday morning with their cars. With their cars now, just maybe to grab they some won't. Coffee. Maybe right. Maybe they won't shut down the street because they won't be able to do that. That's right. But the cars will be all over the streets. There might be a few in front of Cypress Inn, yeah. and I might be down there with something <laughs> special as well. So that's the plan. <laughs> well, good for you. Now, was there? Uh, there was also room I heard that there was going to be something happening right here in Seaside mm -hmm. on Broadway. Would you guys consider doing all of the cars up and down between Fremont and Del Monte? So there's the second annual um, Exotics on Broadway. Yeah. Used to be on Cannery Row, uh, segueing from, from earlier conversation. Yeah. Now they, they do it here on Broadway, and it's a it's a zoo. It and, is. In a good way. In a good way. Um, but it's all more modern exotics. Okay. I focus more on classics. Classics, and, yeah. Mm -hmm. Now you also, with your business, you do evaluations. In other words, if mm -hmm. I'm a client and I have an exotic car and I want to figure out what that car is worth today, I call you and now you are the expert that tell me, well, Gary, that car is be based on what it is, blah, blah, blah. This right. is what some car is similar sold for. This is what I think your car is worth. Is that how you do it? Yeah, that's, that's very accurate. I love working with the states and with families and with people and making sure that all of their ducks are in a row for their lives. So a lot of times I do, especially in our community, um, again, people people pass away, lives change, family sure. dynamics change. Sure. I'm there as, as an assistant in their lives in order, and it's just a small piece, it's their cars, but a lot of times they're collectible pieces that have been in their family yeah. for a long time, and what you don't want are them to be taken advantage of, and someone coming in and maybe, you know, getting something at a price that doesn't make sense so ah. i help plan estates you um, you know what that car should be worth then what right. the value is well that's just it and that transition i can also help them sell those cars yeah. so oh okay i run more imports um classic car dealership oh yeah that, now Monte. that's right down here on del Monte. every mm -hmm. time i drive by i see all those cars uh, on Del Monte at your lot there. More, yeah. more imports. Imports. Mm -hmm. Tell me what's, uh, if I drove down there right now, what would I see today? The most inventory that we've ever had. Really? Um, we've got 25 cars selling during Monterey Car Week. We do an online auction format called Bring a Trailer. It's a seven day auction. It's been very popular and successful for us. So we've done this. This is our third year. We started with COVID. <laughs> And we decided, hey, let's do something in lieu of their no car week. And now we're doing it for our third time. Oh, and good for you. And we've got more inventory and more available cars than we've ever had. That's great. Any, uh, can you throw out some names of what's down there right now? You know, a lot of good Porsches, Alfa Romeo, Mercedes-Benz. Um, you know, we've got some star cars in there and a good mixture of classics from the 40 to 75 range upwards to half a million dollars oh my goodness wow okay so i'm going to ask you this question only because it this particular vehicle mm -hmm. was near and dear to my heart okay when i was in high school uh, my last year in high school i got my hands on a 1957 t-bird all right blue with the porthole on the hard top the That's fiberglass right. top that was removable What's a car like that now? You know, you don't have your book here with you, but what's a 57 T-Bird worth today? So now you're drawing on nostalgia, yeah, right? Yeah. So maybe it's priceless what? to you, right? <laughs> um, and a lot of this, I'll, I will say that, a lot of this industry is built off of nostalgia. Yeah. People going back in their, in their history and saying, I used to have that car, yeah. or now I can finally afford that car. Yes. But you know you're looking depending on the uh, the condition somewhere between twenty five to thirty five thousand. I think you hit the nail on the head because I have a friend who bought a fifty seven T bird a couple of years ago and he paid twenty five thousand for That's it. Right. So there you are, you're right on the spot. Mm -hmm. uh, it, when you go and look at these cars, and they say they're showroom quality as opposed to somebody that maybe restored the car, or they. You know, it's got high mileage, but mm -hmm. it, it, it's a it's a showable car. What makes the the, the difference be, between just a showable car and a real pristine vehicle that would bring big money? That's a great question. There's a lot of elements that go into it: um, paint quality, um, bright work, which is chrome, um, and all the surrounding glass and things like that. Fit and fitment. And service history is a big part of it, uh -huh. too. You know, if a car has been restored, but it was 10 years ago, and they haven't done any maintenance and things like that. So th that's a big element that I look for is, 
you know, current service history. Um, but it's it's really a lot about provenance and, and how a car is presented in today's condition. You know, uh, one of the things that I recall very well is that they only made the 57 T-Bird one year. That's right. They made a 55, which was the first T-Bird, small Mm T-Bird. Then they changed it a little bit in 56. They put a Continental kit, which was the wheel on the back. That's knowledge. That's right. Okay. And then in 57, had the little fins on the back, no Continental kit, and that's the one I had. And and then that was the end of the the, T-Birds. They didn't make them anymore. No, and and again, so now you start going into the history of each make and model and and the minutia of all those things. And once you start to understand that, that gives you those value uh, bullet points or pin yeah. drops. Yeah. And that's what makes me, I guess. Um, You're the expert now. Well, I'm I'm learning every single day, and I and I you know I'm still young in in this industry you in are. a lot of ways, yeah. but. You're um, young. Well, I'm Maybe my, not my 15th industry. year um, well, as a professional. And, good for you. Um, good for you. You know, I'm just looking to do a good job for yeah. the community. It's my way to give back. So what's the best way if somebody out there right now has one of these priceless vehicles mm-hmm. and they want to get a hold of you, can they go to your website? They can go to my website. Um, it's a velocevaluations.com. Spell it out because it's... V-E-L-O-C-E. Veloce. Veloce. Valuations.com. Okay. And uh, you can reach me there. And your, your, your cell number is on the website. Cell phone, email, but you can find me at More Imports as well. Um, and if you guys don't know where More Imports is, look at this. Look at, um, you know where In and Out is on uh, Del Monte? Of course. Who Just, doesn't? Yeah, who doesn't know where In and Out is? <laughs> Just go down the road, a couple of blocks, westbound. And you'll find you'll find more imports, and you'll find Mr. Valachi himself, <laughs> Steve Kittrell, K I T T R E L R E L L. You'll find him there at the shop. Are you there every day? I'm there most days. I'm on the move. Yeah, there's a lot to do and a lot of people to see, but yeah. I'm typically there. And um, so yeah. you'll be there during the show. This all these uh, next few days or what? Yeah, I, I split my time up. Really, my week is hour by hour, okay. and, and that's really the truth. So I'm assisting in a lot of different ways. Um, I'm helping with the new Broad Arrow Group uh, auction that's at the Monterey Jet Center. Oh, okay. And, and paired with the McCall's Jet Party. So my company also does a lot of public relations and um, automotive uh, kind of paperwork. So we're dealing with all the VIN verifications title processing and so we're help running the back end of this major auction uh, i'm showing a couple cars over at concorso italiano which is the saturday over at bayonet here in seaside and i'm also the co-mc this year good for you of that event so i want to introduce you to my nephew who uh, in part of the all of the things he does runs our coca-cola broadcasting in fresno but he also has his own company called Exotic Imports. Okay. And uh, he, he's a he's a car buff like you, and so when he gets over here for a car week, I'm gonna I'm gonna find you and I'm gonna introduce you to Kevin Mosesian, my nephew. Perfect. Because you are you are the kind of guys I could just sit back and watch you talk about vehicles. Because <laughs> right. what Kevin does with his company is he has a Ferrari and a Lamborghini and a uh, I, I think it's a Maserati and a Porsche and he rents them out but then mm. it's not the typical rental that you would think yeah here's the keys sign here and away you go in the car no you actually get to drive the lamborghini or the ferrari but there's a pace car in front of you okay that you follow and there are cameras in the car so they record you driving the car um, if you have right. an extra passenger uh, there's a video of you guys in the car you can switch drivers um, uh, well and you know what maybe uh, well, you when, know when, it's an experience thing, it right? is that's that's what he calls it the ultimate right. driving experience sure well I'm you know I like that element of it too and uh, anytime I travel you know that's why I own classic cars too it's it's my instrument of of experience and I try to really bathe in that nostalgia too because I'm living in my nostalgia now. So I own classic cars and, and manage cars for people and enjoy them and exercise them for you know, them sometimes. You, you know what? You, you, um, you're, but that's you're, how I travel. Steve, cars. you are doing something that's your passion. 
It's something that I don't have. Uh, listen, I don't have to guess about this. <laughs> he loves what he's doing. Yeah. And if you find something in life that you love to do, you'll never work a day in your life. Am I right? Well, I'm working really hard, <laughs> but it, it but is. But you're having inc- fun. It's incredibly rewarding. You're having fun. My kids are involved as much as, as they want to oh, be as well. That's and great. So we that's, go on drives that, and have a good time. That's great. Steve, what a pleasure to have you here tonight. And I, I'm gonna when Kevin gets to town for Car Week, I'm going to seek you out. I want you to meet him. And, Cars and, he, and Coffee? Cars and Hey! Why not? That's a good name for a show. <laughs> Cars and Coffee. I like it. Good for you. Yeah, maybe we'll do a, a Cars and Coffee show here uh, uh, as a wrap-up for what happened here on the peninsula. Sounds like a good idea. Yeah. I appreciate your time. Oh, thanks, thanks for, for having buddy. me. Absolutely. Right. Okay. And uh, Mark, uh, from uh, those old days at Clear Channel, uh, let's play the next video for Steve. Okay, I don't know what he was talking about. Do you know what he was talking about? I didn't know that was... He was talking about the song. He was talking about the song. Michael Bolton, that's what love is all about. Is that what it is? Uh, Yes. That's what love is all about. That's what it is. Michael Bolton. Yeah. Juliana now has been on... Jules has been on the set now almost three hours. (laughs) And her... her, uh, Allergies? Bre- allergies or <laughs> breathing. She's like, what's around here? I'm having a hard time I breathing. I do. I listen. I was just like, what's going on? Uh, I, I've had so much fun tonight. and Thank you for bringing it. It was oh. great to have Charlie tell you the story Jeez. about the full circle from full that circle gift Charlie. card all the way around the block to, to today. Uh, and I'm not just like this moment. And then Steve's. And Steve knowing Mark Carbonero yeah, yeah. all those years uh, back, about 15, same 50, time, 15, 15 years, years ago. ago. And, and yeah, then seeing universe. each other right now. Isn't right? that what you call, you call well, it? What did you dash say? 888 on the way here? Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, oh, let me look She's 888. Now let's get the infinity signal symbol and put that on there. <laughs> well, too. it was because it, you said, hey, my odometer's changed. I don't know. You were talking, we were yeah. talking about the odometer. But it was just fun. We were having fun on that. So. She's, she's good on like numbers. When you put groups and numbers together, she can tell you what they That's mean. Energy, but it's okay. Energy. That's but we don't the need to go there. Let's talk about these great videos. <laughs> <laughs> Unless you want to go there. <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> you. Yeah, that's what's fun about having her here. Because, <laughs> yeah. See, I can't do this with my other co-hosts because I don't know them as well as I know her. <laughs> no, and I can't you. So <laughs> We used to do this a lot, though, in the old show. Yeah, we, we did, didn't we? we? Would, I call it poking. <laughs> I would poke her a little bit. It's playing. Yeah, oh, so... Fun. I brought you some Oreos. Happy birthday, honey. Oh, my goodness. I Look found some Oreos. You. Oh, my goodness. You know, my favorite. Well, you know, we were talking about, like, the 1700s. No, I'm kidding. It's not that. Oreos. But, you know, we, we were talking about, like, going back in time. Yeah. So there we go. Oh, wow, wow. Okay. Good. Okay. Well, you know, now this is this is from Jim Vossen's stash. You yeah. know that. Yeah, Jim Vossen. Jim and the other. Thank you, Jim. And thank you. And also, uh, hello to Mary Lou. Who Mary is Lou just a, had a birthday Friday. Happy birthday to Mary happy Lou Vossen. Happy birthday to Mary Lou. Oh, and you know one other thing I want to say? I, Chris White told me today is Art LeBeau's 98th birthday. Really? Do you know who Art LeBeau is? I wonder how many people know. I recognize who Art the name, LeBeau's. but I don't recall. He, he is on KMBY AM right now, right, Mark? Yes. The Art LeBeau Show. Okay. And Art's been on air in Southern California. He's the guy that came up with the name Oldies But Goodies. No way. Yeah, it was Art no LeBeau. Way. And he had Are original sound records. And he would go around and he'd get all these that's old That's how artists. I remember the name. Oldies But Goodies. But, oh, wow. And that's and, Art and LeBeau. And he's on in He's the on right now, 80, 98 years old, and he's on the air right here in Monterey every Sunday Are night. Is it Mark? Are you serious? Wow. Every Sunday night on KMBY. KMBY. Amazing. Art LeBeau. Happy birthday, Art. I hope when I grow up I can be like you. I want to be around and be on air at 98. Okay, so that's my wish. How you doing, folks? Gary, don't do that. Do be nice. Uh, well, you, you know, know what we were talking i was watching him in the green room and i was like and i was i was telling steve i'm like he is such a rascal he's such a uh, rascal actually you know and what? you know what it was it's the other side of covid you're just yeah, like you're just a rascal and somebody somebody said to, to me the other day you know you're not the same as you were before and i said why what what do you you're honoring <laughs> yeah, I know. that was the word yeah, that you, you're is, honoring he is he's honoring <laughs> i'm honoring once i figured it out i'm like oh i get it now yeah. now i just it's laugh. the covid i blamed it on the covid yeah. it changed everything 
Yeah. Get my earring. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So what's, we've, what's we've got uh, well, we've got a few uh, minutes left for some videos. Let's see, Mark uh, and um, uh, you got your Dylan. News. Dylan, we have uh, Elvis. Bolton. Did you see Let's El do Elvis. Oh, yeah. hey, have you seen the move? The film. I did. You didn't see oh, it. Oh, I didn't see no, it. You I saw it. I went to see it with William was and it Angela. Good? Was it was good. Okay. Yeah, it was good. But, you know, it was done for the young people who knew, who today know absolutely nothing about Elvis. Yeah. See, I was fortunate enough to be around when Elvis was yes. Elvis. Yes. But it's like the story of him and, oh, that's and beautiful. Uh, Colonel Parker. Now, who was the musician you want to do the film about? Um, I wanted to do the film about Sam Cooke. That's right, Sam yeah, Cooke. Sam Cooke. Um, I think Sam Cooke had a terrific career. A lot of people don't know who Sam Cooke was, but You Send Me was Sam's big yes. hit. Darling, you send me. <laughs> okay, let's go play My Way by Elvis. And Jules, what a fantastic song that is. Isn't that a great a song? Beautiful. Just a beautiful song. What a, what a wonderful world this is. And, you know, tonight is a special night. It really is a special night for me because you're here. Mm -hmm. And when you said you'd fill in, because I was going to have uh, someone else tonight mm -hmm. who's going to be on later this month yes. as yes. a host, but then you volunteered to do it. And it's I said, a birthday present. Happy yeah, birthday. Happy birthday happy to birth me. Surprise you. Surprise. <laughs> so it worked out well, and it yeah. brought back so many memories. Yeah. When we did this show over on Garden Road at our KYMB studios. Yeah. And it is a wonderful world. And we've had so many uh, share stories since yesterday yes. of the full circle of yes. life and how a lot of what's happening is just coming. Connections. Connections. And it's all coming around and how beautiful it is. Yeah. And she said to me off camera before we came back, she said, you're really having a good time, aren't you? <laughs> I said, yes. That's why I wanted to do this. I know. I told you I wanted to do it because I wanted to have fun. And thank, thank you again for all our watching and yeah. for Teeny Shake, uh, and for, for being a for, guest. And for Teeny being here tonight. You know, I hadn't seen Teeny in a long time because he's a hard guy to pin oh, down. No, I said, Teeny, can we go have coffee? Well, you know, I got this. <laughs> I'm a, he's always busy. He I goes, thought I was hey, a busy He goes guy. to church on Sunday. Maybe that's and where I got And I know gotta, where now. So I guess can... that's where I got to get him. <laughs> okay. Go catch him outside church on <laughs> no, Sunday. No, we're not going to talk. No, we're not. Teeny, I want to talk to you. No, 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 no. Anyway, uh, yeah. and then uh, Mr. Bill Graham from the Cattery Row Company. Uh, I haven't seen Bill in a while, and, you know, we had him on the old show. And um, and then uh, Charlie Byers and you and the Toys for the Kids. And uh -huh. Aren't you, I, didn't you give me a, uh -huh. a coupon for something at Jose's? Uh -huh. And it led all the way around to here. Yep, it was about great. About 15, 15 years ago. 15 years ago. And yeah, then Steve was Could have been 15 years because the kids are not that old. Anyway. Maybe it was eight years ago, seven years it's ago. It's just, it's really it says something about life and yes. how when we ripple out, you know, uh, connections. And tell and everybody know, how you came up with the name of the show. Monterey Ed tonight? Oh, uh, it was, I was, I love Johnny Carson. Yeah. You know, The Tonight Show. Who's that? Who's that? Oh, I know. I know who Johnny Carson is. Yeah. Anyway, I love to watch Johnny Carson. Dylan doesn't know who Johnny Carson was. I've heard of him. He's heard of him. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. And so is Monterey on Tonight. Yeah. yeah that's so it was like The Tonight Show. Uh-huh. But the and desk now, Jim also did a beautiful uh, job well, on the you know, set we're, because we're, it's curved. It's not yes, and we're in a very confined space <laughs> compared to our elaborate old right. studio. But we we had an elaborate studio. But, but this is perfect as beautiful and the desk i designed for the yep. show from yep. the yep. larry king desk right yep. i had it built from it was after the week so we could face the guests that's if you remember. right so i just i like the she, curve she figured it all out and then when she came and walked in here she goes oh my god well is you this, did all you this? Know, this looks just like the other one i said well it's a little flimsier but it no works. it's perfect it's perfect yeah. you did a great job on it Great well, job. thank you for being here tonight. We can end the show now with and our last video. Before we do, I want to thank Mark Carpadero and Dylan yes. at the controls for being here. Just Dylan Holmes, yes. thank you, Dylan, for being here. You guys did a great job, and it wasn't your fault when the computer froze. I know that. Well, we can. We're going to edit that out. But we'll final edit one. it out. Yeah, because yeah, Bill's going to send this show to France? to Europe. Yeah. So, so, so we're we, going to give him the polish version. We'll give him a polish version. This is the live version. version. <laughs> this is the live version. It's live, folks. Okay.
night. Isn't that right? Yeah. So we call it a night. We'll call it a night. Thank okay. you for being here. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thanks for watching. Good night. Good night.